If you want to truly understand something, you need to know its history. In the United States, our whiskey got its start as a little thing called moonshine. So we are on the hunt for the world's greatest shine, and we found it here in South Carolina. We don't obey the rules. Oh, sun, won't you shine on me? Won't you shine on me? When the rain has come. Our first stop in the Palmetto State is beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. We're in Charleston, everyone. <laughs> Charleston Chews. Just shot that. <laughs> All right, so we actually don't have a distillery here in Charleston, but uh, they begged us to come by so they could unveil this statue of me. No, uh, we're at White Peak Garden, uh, which is right on the edge of the bay. That had played a couple, uh, a big role in a couple different wars. As we wander around Charleston, we see that while there were some folks huddled around stills in the hills of South Carolina, there was definitely another half that lived just a little different. This house used to be white like the other ones, but then the owner went insane. Delightfully insane. While we love Charleston, our goal for the day, between you and us, is to get some of the state's legendary liquor onto our parched palates. So we head to Greenville. Nestled on Main Street, we find Dark Corner Distillery, home of the most highly decorated moonshine in the world. So the dark corner of Greenville, a lot of people associate the name with moonshine and, and magic and mystery that took place up in the hills, uh, but actually the name itself comes from, uh, coined from the once Vice President of the United States, John C. Calhoun, when he was lamenting that the bright light of nullification would never shine in the dark corner, and he was talking about the hills of the Appalachian Mountains. After years working for a major liquor producer, Joe Fenton founded Dark Corner as the first legal distillery in South Carolina since Prohibition. From the booths to the equipment, everything in Dark Corner is based on the historic techniques used by those moonshining rascals in the 1700s. Tradition speaks volumes as his moonshine has won more awards than any other on the entire planet, and probably the history of the universe. We put together a design that we thought would be reminiscent of an old 1700s Scottish Mountain pot still. Uh, we designed it, I designed it myself. Uh, we built it right here in town, so it's really unique, one of a kind. Did, you, really, did you build it or? Yeah, or my father and I built it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that's why it kind of looks the way yeah. it does. It's, it's not the Cadillac, yeah. uh, but it produces Cadillac whiskey. He starts with corn, red wheat, and barley. After grinding these grains, he creates a mash with Appalachian yeast to ferment the mix. A few days later, he removes the grain and the wash goes into the still. The alcohol heats, evaporates, and then travels down through the arm of the still into a cold water barrel. This is where the moonshine is cooled and turned back into a liquid. Once distilled, the spirit can be proofed down and put either into barrels to age bourbon or into our thirsty bellies in the form of the world's best moonshine. You should get a lot of like buttery, kind of popcorny flavors. Yeah. Um, the kettle corn almost, kind of like a smoky uh, corn flavor. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit sweet, that kettle corn. So you age this in the right barrel, it becomes bourbon. So this is essentially the white dog version of this. So you're gonna get a lot of nice oaky, smoky, uh, kind of deep barrel flavors. Um, and the sweet corn flavors that you got from the first one evolved more into like a, a molasses-y type sweetness. Yeah, that's great. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. It's really, really good. It's a real sipper. Yeah. Back up your moonshot is still out there. Where do you find it? A little further up the road. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's just yeah. a little further up the road. Um, now, that's an old saying that, uh, that actually the guys in the dark corner used to say is basically, if you guys from out of town have come to the area and you ask me, where do you get moonshine? I'd say, it's a little further up the road, head towards the dark corner. And you guys would eventually drive and go, well, we're not seeing signs or anything. You pull over and knock on someone's door. Where do you get the moonshine? And the guy's gonna tell you, it's a little further up the road. 
eventually you're gonna be in Asheville and go, this guy's lying to us, yeah. there's no moonshine. You fasted all along the way, you just didn't know it. Yeah. So. so this is the recipe for the down the road sour. So first off, you're gonna need about half a lemon. These cherries have been soaking in moonshine for about um, eight months. So we'll take three of those. We're gonna take a little bit of simple, and then a little bit of uh, the cherry bitters, about three dashes of cherry bitters. And you're just gonna muddle that all together. Bad ice. It's gonna be about two ounces of dark corner moonshine. And then we're gonna top it with uh, an, an ounce of Saint Germain elderflower liqueur. And finally, we're just gonna roll it and mix it all around. And there you are, the down the road sour. And so we found it. American whiskey got its start in these hallowed hills and those across the country. We still don't know where whiskey is headed, but to find out, we're going a little further up the road.